Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We'll give everybody a chance to find their seats. Good morning. All right. That's what I like. All right. Is this too loud or are you okay? Mrs. Murphy. I know. I know. Nobody likes to be up front, right? They're afraid. I know. And then we have, don't tell them, but we have some latecomers like every week and they come in and put chairs in the back. So the back is really heavy, but the front is really light. So move on up. See? Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, just a quick question. Anybody having some difficulty with the, the um, pollen right now? So nobody, right? <laughs> yeah. This is, this is really tough, um, you know, when the pollen starts to get this high. Trees are really high. Grasses are starting to go. So if you're out working in your yard at all, y wear a mask. Believe it or not, it really helps. Just, you know, filtering out that stuff. And it d how many of you use a neti pot or do some kind of nasal rinsing? Oh, so oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to I got to plug the neti pot. What's that? You have one. So that's good. <laughs> that's 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 good. How, okay, so maybe that's the question I should ask. How many of you have a neti pot? Okay, so still not that many. So just just to kind of review, uh, actually using a neti pot, this is a this is a yoga practice. Okay, this is a yoga practice because the most important thing in yoga is breathing, breathing properly. And you can't breathe properly if your nose is kind of clogged uh, and you can't get uh, air in. So the neti pot, it looks like a little Aladdin's lamp. It's, it's just this little teeny pot. Um, you can buy them at, in any of the like major drugstores now. Um, uh, you can order them online. Um, you put a little bit of salt in it. So I want to just mention um, how important it is to use um, a kosher salt that does not have a caking agent in it. So if you look at salt when you're shopping in the store, most table salt has something called an anti-caking agent. It keeps it from clumping. So it makes your salt sprinkle nicely, right? So you don't want that. Um, I. Th uh, I don't want to plug diamond, but I think I think that's one of the ones that you can use um, uh, that doesn't have the anti-caking agent. Personally, I like a pink salt or a gray salt. Do you all have you all seen that? They're more natural salt, so I like that because it has minerals in it as well, which is which is a little bit of a buffer for the for the um, sodium that goes into your nose. So you use, I'm sorry. Yeah, yep, sea salt. So I I sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's gray, sometimes it's white. Um, <coughs> so just make sure whatever you get does not have that anti-caking agent in it. So what you do is you put uh, sort of warm water in the pot and start with like a half a teaspoon of salt, maybe a little bit more. I'm kind of a salty lady, so I like more salt. Um, some people complain when they first start to use it that there's a like a burning sensation. That's usually because you don't have enough salt. So you wouldn't want to get confused and think, oh, there's too much salt, so it's making a burning. It burns because there's not enough salt. So a half a teaspoon of salt, fill your little pot with water, shake it up so that the salt dissolves in it, and then kind of lean over your sink, put the spout in one nostril, tilt your head, and kind of do this, and it'll run out the other nostril. And what this does is it, it n irrigates your nasal passages, it cleans your nasal passages, because in order for your nose to filter the air, to filter the all the stuff that's out there right now, there's all these, you got millions and millions of little hairs that are called cilia. And if the cilia are full, like if you've been filtering out pollen and the cilia are full, that stuff just bypasses the cilia and gets right into your lungs. So this is why it's important to rinse your nose, because you want to rinse all that stuff off of your cilia so that it's able to, to filter a little bit better. So there's my neti pot pitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question. Yes. Yay. I'm sorry. Yeah.
Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Thank you. So, uh, so a good pitch for COVID uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and using it. So I, I'm a twice a day person as well, just as a matter of routine. So I brush my teeth twice a day. I do the neti pot twice a day. It's just part of what I do. So yeah, yeah. So anybody, anybody else questions about the neti pot? <laughs> You're gonna all run out and grab one now, right? <laughs> Straight, I use straight from the tap. So I, you know, I, people ask this question all the time because there was years ago there was this thing that went viral about some sort of a brain-eating amoeba that got into your nose from the water. But if you bathe in it, if you drink it, even if you filter it, if you're brushing your teeth with it, it's fine to irrigate your nose with it. So I just do right from the tap. Yeah. The initial pot comes in about 50 oh, do they? Okay, the good. Okay, great, to get you started, good, yeah. And if, it, it actually, to your point, if you don't want to use salt, you can buy those little packets at the at the drugstore as well. They're kind of pre-mixed, and they usually have a little buffer in them, like a little bit of uh, 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 um, baking soda, thank you, um, to, to kind of buffer it a little bit. So if you don't want to do the measuring yourself. Good, thank you. I, well, I've got a neti pot ambassador in here. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. All right, so now that we've kind of covered that, let's do some breathing. <coughs> so come right up to the front edge of your chair and have your feet underneath your knees and see if you can get all parts of your feet on the floor. So if you remember, I've been talking a lot about the, f the feet like having four tires, right? So two in the back where the heel is and then two in the front here. So just make sure all four tires are on the floor. And you can be in your socks or your shoes if that's comfortable. If you want to be barefoot, that's okay too. And then notice where your shoulders are relative to your hips. Are you kind of leaning forward? Are you kind of slouching back a little bit? See if you can get your shoulders kind of right over your hips. And then let your neck relax. Imagine your head is like a water balloon. It's just kind of perched on top of your shoulders. And if it's comfortable to close your eyes, go ahead and do that now. If you'd rather not close your eyes, you can just drop your gaze down at the floor. And notice your breathing. Notice first if the air is moving in and out of your nose as opposed to using your mouth. And is the airflow even between the right and left nostrils? If you're having some difficulty breathing, try inhaling through your nose and exhaling through pursed lips like you're blowing out a candle. Notice the temperature of the air as you breathe in and breathe out. Notice where your body is responding to the inhalation and exhalation. Do you feel expansive? Do you feel tight or contracted? Can you sense movement in your belly, in your ribs? And now see if you can begin to lengthen the breath. So let each inhalation get a little bit longer and slower. And let each exhalation also get slower. <coughs> As you breathe in, allow your belly to expand, and as you breathe out, feel your belly gently contract. Breathing in, the belly expands, and breathing out, the belly contracts.
And as your belly expands on the inhalation, see if you can take in even more breath and let your rib cage expand as well. And as you exhale, let go of the breath completely, pulling your navel in toward your spine so the belly and the rib cage get a little contraction. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths in and out. Take one more full deep breath in, and as you exhale, let that go with a sigh. <sighs> go back to your natural breath and let your eyes gently open. Good. And then let's stretch a little bit with the arms up overhead. So this also helps with breathing to expand the rib cage a little bit. So go a little more to the right and then a little more to the left. Just sort of lengthening from the hip all the way up. Good. And then take your hands together, interlace your fingers, and then press your palms away. Round through your upper back and drop your chin to your chest. And breathe in and out. With your next breath in, release your hands, draw them up and around behind you, interlace them again. Draw the shoulder blades together, elbows back, chest comes forward. Try not to lift your chin way up, keep your chin kind of tucked down a little bit. And again, we're going to breathe into this top part of the chest here, breathing in, breathing out. Great. And then release that. Roll your shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Let's take the right arm across the, to the left, and we're just going to pull that arm over. Turn and look out over your right shoulder. <coughs> then lift and lower your chin like you're saying yes. And again, nice, slow, steady breath. So as we're moving this morning, think about the breath being round and smooth. So there's no place where you hold your breath. There's no place where it feels like it's skipping at all. And then bring your head back to center, release your arm, sweep it around behind your back, grab hold of your hand back there, or maybe even your wrist, and pull that arm over to the left a little bit. And then drop your left ear to your left shoulder. <coughs> and we're going to turn the nose down and up. So it's like we're saying no. So there's this really gentle no movement. Good. And then bring your head back up to center. We're going to release that arm, sweep it forward and all the way up overhead or as far up as you can go. And then we're going to bend the elbow and place the hand on the shoulder or on the back of the head. Push that elbow up a little bit. And if you can, reach up and see if you can grab hold of the elbow way up there. Now, if that doesn't work for you, just do it this way. That's absolutely fine. So watch that you're not craning your neck like this. You want to have your neck nice and relaxed. Your head is relaxed. Breathe in, breathe out, turn and look out over your left shoulder. And with your next exhale, let's release that arm, turn the head to the right, come back to center. Good. Take your left arm, sweep it over to the right, pull it across. Breathe in, breathe out, and turn and look out over your left shoulder. And a little yes movement, so lifting and lowering the chin. And then turning back to center, we're going to take that hand behind the back. Sorry, I'm messing with my mic. And you're going to grab hold of the hand or the wrist and pull that over. Breathing in, breathing out. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder. 
and then we'll do a no movement here. So turning the head down and then up, keeping the ear as close to the shoulder as possible. Breathing in, breathing out. Good. And then head comes back to center. Release that arm from behind your back. Sweep it up and overhead. Bend the elbow. Place your hand on your shoulder, on the back of your head. And then just kind of push that elbow up a little bit. So we're getting a stretch here through the triceps. If you can reach up and overhead and pull the elbow back, go ahead and do that. If that doesn't work for you, just keep the hand right here. That's absolutely fine. You want to make sure you're not straining your neck and that your breath stays round and smooth, right? So if it's really difficult to breathe, if you're having a lot of challenge up here, just put your hand right back down there. Taking a couple more breaths in and out. And then releasing that arm all the way down. Let's roll the shoulders forward, up, back, and down a couple of times. Good. <coughs> and then we're going to move right down to the toes this morning. So extend your right leg, have your heel on the floor. And if you want to take your shoes off at this point, it might be a good idea. We're going to squeeze and extend the toes. So this is what I'm doing with my toes up here. Squeezing and extending toes. Now, if you have your shoes off, Take a look at your toes as you're extending. Can you create some daylight between your toes? Even a little bit. And when you squeeze, notice as you're squeezing your toes together, um, if they kind of all move in, in unison, right? If they're all moving together. And the next time that you extend, spread your toes really wide. See if you can get daylight between all of your toes. Hmm. If you're in a shoe, that's not going to really work so well unless it's a sandal. Um, but just do the best you can, right? Breathing in, breathing out, and then relax that. We're going to start to tap the toe, toes and the heel. So um, if this feels like a little too much for your leg and your th uh, thigh this morning, you can have your heel on the floor and just point and flex that way. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, don't even tap. Just do this in the air, right? So that's a little more challenging because you don't even have a rest in between. And then let's circle at the ankle. Notice if you're breathing smoothly or if your breath has gotten a little shallow or choppy. And then we're going to switch direction of those ankle turns here. Now you might notice some noise. Ankles are noisy and that's okay. And then we're going to put that heel right back on the floor. Bring your hands alongside your chair, right alongside your hips, rather, on the chair. And then pull your belly in a little bit. And we're going to bend the knee and extend the knee. So if you want to challenge yourself, this is the most challenging, keeping the foot up off the floor. If that's a little too much, you can tap. If that's too much, slide. Right, So you can just slide back and forth. So breathing in and breathing out. Good. And the next time that your knee is bent and your foot is underneath you, we're going to place that foot on the floor so we're stretching the bottoms of the toes. So it's you're in that extended position with the toes, right? And then slide the foot back a little bit, see if you can get a little bit more of a sense of stretch in the toes. Now, <coughs> some of us have a little more compression in the foot, um, so you're not going to want to go back too far. You want to create some sensation in the toes so that you can feel that stretch maybe up into your foot. Make sure your little toe is on the floor. So if your little toe is just kind of riding up on the one next to it, angle your heel out to the right a little bit. That'll get that little toe. Everybody got all their little toes on the floor? Good. Okay, so breathe in, breathe out, and then press down into the bottom of the foot as if you were going to stand up on that leg. So give that a good press and then release. And a press and release. And notice your breath, smooth and easy. Noti notice if you're creating some tension in your chest or your jaw, your hands, because oftentimes the hands will hold on, right? And we're creating a lot of sensation there. So a couple more times, just pressing and releasing. We're stretching the bottom of the foot, the bottoms of the toes. Good. Okay, and then relax that a little bit. We're going to come up and over the top of the foot. Now, if you have a shoe handy, I'm going to grab mine just so you can see. You can put your foot on the shoe, especially if the floor is a little hard on your foot. So we're going to stretch the top 
of the foot. So it's like this. So your foot is pointed, right? So again, if you want, you can put it on a shoe. If that just doesn't feel right, you can just go right on the floor. Now this time, press a little more into the big toe side of your foot, right? So we tend to uh, press into the little toe side of the foot a little more. That's the that's the sprained ankle position, right? So when you roll, if you've ever rolled your ankle, you always roll to the outside, right? So this is to stretch a little bit more of the muscles that come right up the front of your shin. So just like you did when the toes were in the other direction, you're gonna push down into the top of the foot and then relax and push down and relax. So this just gives you that stretch and release a few times. Breathing in, breathing out. So pressing and releasing, pressing and releasing, and making sure, again, you're getting um, the s most of the sensation is here in the front of the shin. One more time, pressing and releasing. Good. And then lean back a little bit. We're going to extend that leg out, heel on the floor. Let's wiggle the toes around a little bit. Okay, so get your heel on the floor and lengthen that leg as much as you can, right? So get it as long as you can from your hip all the way down to your heel. Draw your toenails toward your shin, right? So draw the toenails toward the shin. We're going to take the uh, hands over to that left knee or thigh. Make sure your left foot is underneath your knee and that you're not on the fr very front edge of your chair because you don't want to slide off your chair. You want to be kind of up on the side of the hill there. And then keeping your back nice and strong, pull your belly in. We're going to hinge forward from the hips like you're trying to bring your belly button down onto your hands here. And then come back up. So we're just going to explore this forward movement a little bit, coming forward and back. Keep that right leg active and engaged. So that means the muscles here in the thigh are strong. And the toenails are reaching toward the shin and you're breathing in and breathing out smoothly and evenly, right? So it's that round, smooth breath. And then the next time that you come forward, you're going to stay here and breathe. So lengthening through the back of that leg. So is everybody feeling a little stretch in the back of the right leg? Good. Okay. And it can be anywhere, you guys. So it could be f anywhere from the bottom of your foot all the way up to your sitting bones, right into your buttocks. Some people are going to feel it in multiple places. Some people are going to feel it like in one place in particular. So if you happen to be like, say, really tight in your calves, you might be feeling a really deep calf stretch here. If you're tight in your hamstring muscles, those are the muscles in the back of the thigh. You'll be feeling it up there. So breathe in, breathe out. If you'd like, take your right hand and slide it down toward your right knee and then keep sliding down until you can grab your big toe. <laughs> Go, just go in that direction, right? So if you don't get to the big toe, that's okay. If you get there, good for you. That's great. Make sure you can breathe. If you're holding your big toe and you're holding your breath, that's not a real good combination. I would suggest letting go of your big toe and going back to breathing. All right. One more breath in and out. And then you're going to take that right hand back on top of the left. Push into your hands and kind of push yourself up. Great. All right, so sitting upright, hands alongside you, that leg is still extended. We're gonna lift and lower the leg, right? So nice and slow. We're lifting and lowering. And see if you can feel the muscles here in the thigh working, and then maybe even up into the hip a little bit. If you're feeling it in your back, you wanna push into your hands a little bit and give your back some support. So you don't want your back doing the job of lifting your leg. You want your leg and your hip to do that job. The next time you lift, can you hold? And then really squeeze these muscles strong, right? Nice and strong. Are you breathing? <sighs> yeah, okay. So if you can, we're gonna start to rotate the leg in and out or out and in all the way from the hip. So it's not just the ankle. It's all the way from the hip. If your leg feels like it weighs a thousand pounds and you can't hold it up any longer, just put your heel on the floor. We can still do these rotations with the heel on the floor. We're gonna do five more of these if you can, just five more. So you're rotating the leg bone in the hip socket, right? Breathing in, breathing out. 
Okay, 26, 27, and then let's lower down. Whew. Bend that knee, give that leg a little bit of a massage. So we've been working that leg quite a bit. All right, let's extend the left leg, heel on the floor. I think we have to start at the toes, right? Wow, let's go, right? So we're squeezing and extending toes. And again, look down at that foot, notice. Can you create some daylight in there? Is it easier? on this side or is it more challenging on this side does this foot feel different <coughs> when you do this kind of work so an interesting thing is most of us have one foot bigger than the other and it can be a, it, it's usually about a half a size which is a lot quite frankly and so what ends up happening in order to get shoes that fit we fit the smaller foot because otherwise you'd be walking out of your shoe right so we fit the smaller foot and then the bigger foot gets squished. So usually we have one foot that's a little more achy, tight, sore. You, can balance not, uh, you, you can't balance as easily on it. So you might notice that when you're kind of doing things. Gee, is my, lar is my larger foot a little cramped in the shoes? All right, so next time you spread your toes, spread them really wide, see if you can really get some daylight in there. Everybody see some daylight? those without socks on all right and then we'll start to point and flex the foot so toe independence I talk about this all the time right are you guys tired of me talking about toe independence <laughs> toe independence so important for balance and it affects everything all the way up right so if your feet are jammed and sore and hurting um, it's really hard for your hips and your knees to compensate for the inability of your feet to do their job. Okay, let's start to circle at the ankle. And as always, you can do this with your heel on the floor. If it's just a little too much for your, your leg, your hip, your back to manage, you can do this with your heel on the floor. Reverse the direction of your circles. Keep breathing. I keep forgetting that. And then heel comes down to the floor. You're going to bring your hands alongside your hips on the chair. Just push down a little bit. And what this does is it keeps the shoulders lined up over the hips because if you're forward, you're going to notice it right away. And it helps to support your back. Pull your belly in. That's also a key uh, component to supporting your back is pulling your belly in. So we're going to bend and extend this knee. All right. So again, check in. Does this knee work differently than the other one? Hmm. For most of us, there's a little bit of a difference. If you've got some aftermarket hardware in that knee, it's definitely going to work differently. Right? So whether it's your own knee or you just have some extra pieces in there or you got a whole new knee. Okay. Next time you bend, we're going to put that foot on the floor so we're stretching the bottoms of the toes, right? Slide the foot back a little bit. See if you can get under there get that little toe on the floor you might need to angle that foot out a little bit quite often on your larger foot your little toe is going to be curled under a little bit more than on your smaller foot because again it's being jammed into the shoe um, that's a little bit more snug so it can be more challenging on your larger foot to get that little toe on the floor so press down strongly again like you're going to stand on that foot and then release and press and release. And we're just going to continue to do this a few times. It's a good way to stretch the bottoms of the toes. And there might be a lot of sensation there, right? So if your foot has been in shoes a lot, which I think at this stage of the game, it's pretty safe to assume that most of us are in shoes a lot, um, then the bottom of your foot could be a little bit tight. Breath is smooth and round. Good couple more just pressing down and releasing excellent and then we're going to come up over the tops of the toes and get the top of the foot on the floor and once again you might find your shoe under there kind of cushioning the the floor a little bit the floor can be a little hard pushing into the top of the foot. Now this time you're going to press a little more into the big toe side so that you're getting the muscles right here on the inside of your lower leg bone, which is your tibia. So we're stretching that a little bit. And just like you did when your toes were the other way, we're pushing down 
and then releasing and breathing. So push down and release, push down and release. It's good to stretch these muscles out a little bit. These can get a little, these muscles can get a little sore because they're, um, they're antagonists to your calf muscles. And your calf muscles, I mean, think about it, your calf muscles are big and juicy, right? You got nice big muscles back there. And in the front, you get your shin bone and some little teeny muscles. And somehow they act counterbalance pretty well. So the next time you press down, hold, breathe, relax your jaw. Good, and then we'll relax the foot and the leg. We're gonna lift up, extend that leg out nice and straight and then wiggle your toes around a little bit. Good, okay. Now engage these thigh muscles here on this side. Lengthen that leg, get it as long as it can go and draw your toenails toward your shin. So as you draw your toenails toward your shin, if you don't have your hands alongside, you might wanna do that now just to keep the shoulders over the hips, pull your belly in, and we're gonna lift and lower that leg. And I forgot a piece, we're gonna go back and do that. Good, so we're lifting and lowering nice and slow, right? So notice as you're lifting and lowering, is your body flexing? Or are you leaning back? Can you keep your shoulders right above your hips? Next time you lift, you're gonna hold and really squeeze these muscles here in the thigh. And now we're gonna rotate the whole thigh from way up here in the hip. We're gonna rotate the whole leg in and out or out and in. You can do this on the floor if that feels good. So it's not a circling at the ankle and it's not doing this in and out. Nope, it's this. Just like that. Good. Keep breathing. Okay. Two more. And then we're going to lower that heel down. Keep your leg extended. Keep your toes reaching toward your shin. Sit up and take both hands to your right thigh. And then we're going to hinge forward from the hips like you're trying to bring your navel down onto your hands and then come back up. So breathing in, breathing out. Good. Breathing in and breathing out. Great. So each time you come forward, make sure you can feel a stretch in the back of that left leg. So the next time you come forward, hold it here. Yeah. Notice what that feels like. If you're not feeling a stretch in the back of the leg, are you really engaging your toes toward your shin? Do you have your thigh muscles nice and strong and active? And then if you'd like, take your left hand and slide it down toward that left knee and then continue on down maybe toward the ankle, maybe down to the toes. Perhaps you can touch your toes on this side or perhaps you touched your toes on the other side or maybe it's just adequate to say hello from afar. That's okay too. So breathing in and breathing out. Nice, slow, steady breaths. Keeping the back nice and long. The belly is strong. One more breath in and out in this forward position. And then slowly coming up, pressing into your hands. Good, let's bend that knee. And we'll give that leg a little bit of a massage. All right. All right, how are your legs feeling, everybody? Feeling okay? Feeling alive? All right, let's move up to the hands. We're going to do a little bit of work for the hands here. So just like we did with the feet, right? Squeezing and extending, squeezing and extending, breathing in and breathing out. Good, and then let's say stop. So really extending and then Fingers down and up and down. Now wrists, like ankles, can be pretty noisy. There's, it's usually a smaller noise because you got the smaller bones in there. So as you're doing this, let's start to circle around. This will sometimes get that noise going a little bit. And reverse direction. Good. 
All right, and then let's bring the arms out to the sides, turn your palms up, reach out through the fingers on both hands like you're trying to touch the walls on opposite sides of the room, getting your arms really lengthened. Now with the arms really lengthened and the uh, upper arms staying parallel to the floor, or if you're down here, that's okay too. So you just wanna keep them either parallel or a little bit lower. We're gonna bend the elbows and tap the shoulders. So breathe in and breathe out. We're just bending and tapping, relaxing the neck and the jaw, right? So you don't want to bend your elbows by contracting those top of the shoulder muscles. So a couple more of these. Good. And the next time that your hands come to your shoulders, we're going to pause here for a moment and we're going to start by going up overhead. So you want to take your hands and it's like you're pushing up push, 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 get as long and tall as you can, like you could lift yourself off your seat, and then we're gonna come all the way back down and tap the shoulders. So push up, breathe in and breathe out. It doesn't matter when you inhale and exhale as long as your breath stays round and smooth, right? Round and smooth, breathing in, breathing out. Little pause in between, that's okay, but a big pause, not so good. One more time, we're gonna go up, and down good and now take your elbows behind you keep holding on to your shoulders or have your fingers on your shoulders elbows are kind of lifted behind you like little chicken wings and you're going to pull your shoulder blades together right so it's like you're pulling the shoulder blades together keep the shoulder blades pulled together now notice if you're doing this pull your chin down a little bit so you want your spine straight your shoulders are over your hips not forward like that your shoulders are over your hips and we're going to extend the arms behind and then come back and tap the shoulders. So keep the elbows lifted, right? You don't want to don't want to pull the elbows up like this. You want to keep the elbows lifted behind you the whole time. So the movement is happening just at the elbows. I'll go sideways so you can see. Right? So like that, not like this. So we want to keep it just like that. This is a little bit harder. Are you all breathing? Hmm, I'm suspicious. I'm not hearing a lot of yeses. One more time. This is a tough one, you guys. Okay, now relax your elbows and your shoulders, and we're going to rotate the arms, right? So a little circling. Good. And again, shoulders can be noisy. That's okay. I guess I can say that about all joints. All joints can be noisy. I'll just say that blanket statement. And reverse direction. Okay, let's relax the left arm. We're going to keep making circles with the right arm, like you're making big circles on the wall. Good, and reverse the circles. Uh-huh. Let's do a figure eight. So make a nice big eight here. The eight, the top is smaller than the bottom. Remember how to make an eight? Well, your elbow might not remember how to make an eight if you've never done it with your elbow before. Maybe this is all brand new. So breathing in, breathing out, and then reverse the eight. Hmm, takes a little brain work, right, to reverse the eight. Okay. All right, and then just kind of shake that arm out a little bit. Whew. Let's take the left. We're gonna make some circles. Yeah, we gotta do the other side. <laughs> all right. Breathing in, breathing out. We're going to reverse. Go the other way. Excellent. Good. How about figure eight on this side? So this is, this is left side now. So for those of you who are uh, right hand dominant, this might feel really strange. Or maybe it's super easy because you have no preconceived notion about how to make an eight. Right? It's like, I have no idea. feels fine. And then reverse. That's it. Good. Okay, and then let's let that go and kind of shake it out a little bit. All right, shake out both arms. All right, let's move back to the legs. So we're just going to give the shoulders a little bit of a rest. We're going to switch, um, uh, slide over rather to the uh, right hand side of your chair. Have your left hand here just to give you a little bit of support, sitting up nice and tall. So you're still facing forward. 
you're sitting up nice and tall, your shoulders are directly above your hips, and imagine you've got a little wall over here on the outside of your right leg. And we're gonna lift that leg up, go over the wall, and then place the foot down, right? So we're gonna do that a few times. So lift up and come back and down. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice if you're leaning to do this, right? So if when you lift your foot up, if you're leaning a little bit, just go a little bit lower. Go nice and slow. So the slower you go, the more challenge it is, but the better this is for your hips and your legs. All right, so the next time you have your leg out to the side, we're gonna hold it there. Good, so you're still facing me. You're not turning your body this way. You're still facing me. You're gonna take that foot using your heel and your toes and walk the foot out a little bit more. So now have your heel, or your ankle rather, underneath your knee. In other words, you don't want your foot out here. You don't want it in here. You wanna have the foot underneath right here. And then you're gonna engage the muscles in the outer part of your hip and pull your knee toward the wall behind you. All right, sit up nice and tall. Good, you're gonna take your right hand over. Is that your right hand? Yes, it is, and that's your left leg, right? Yes, so we're gonna do that and then turn to the left a little bit. Don't let your knee fall forward, right? So if your knee kind of starts to go in the direction that you're turning your torso, see if you can pull that knee toward the back wall, turn to the left. So this is a little bit of a stretch for the spine. It's a little bit of engagement for the hip, the glutes, the leg. So we're getting a whole bunch of things in here. Breath is round and smooth, right? Breath is round and smooth. And then we're gonna unwind the torso coming back and we're gonna extend that leg. So have your heel on the floor, your toes reaching up toward the shin. Again, you're facing me, right? Your body is facing this way. We're gonna take the right hand down that right thigh and then just sort of lean out into that right side, keeping the left shoulder open, okay? So if your shoulder starts to roll like this, you wanna take your hand to the chair and see if you can keep that shoulder open. So for most of us, that's gonna mean not a really big lean over into that side. Keep this knee as straight as you can manage, right? One more time. Coming all the way out. Good, excellent. Now point your toes. Good, so lengthen that leg a little bit more, really pointing the toes. Left hand on the chair if it's not there already. We're gonna lean into the left side going to take the right arm up and then come back down to kind of that neutral position, right? So breathing in and breathing out, we're leaning into that left side, be pointing the toes, good. One more time, we'll get a good stretch in through here. I'm going to hold this for just a breath if you can, so lengthen your arm. If your arm doesn't go up all that far, you know, if you can't get your arm overhead, come out to the front a little bit, that's okay. So wherever is gonna give you that feeling of stretch on that side of your body. One more breath, you guys. And then come all the way back. Good, relax that leg, use your heel and your toes. Gonna walk the leg around. We're gonna scoot way over to the left. So just go over to the left from where you are. So you're still facing forward. Your left hip is a little bit off the chair. We've got a little bit of a wall here on this left side. And then holding on to the chair with your right hand, we're gonna lift that leg up, go out to the side and place it down. So breathe in and breathe out nice and slow, right? So again, the slower you go, the more, you're, uh, more benefit you're getting in the muscles around your hip your leg. Try not to lean to the side to get that leg up. If you're leaning to the side, you, we're not actually engaging the muscles in the way that we want to. So it's better to lift just a little bit and go over as opposed to lifting really high and leaning to go over. Good. Are we breathing? Awesome. Okay. Next time your foot is out to the side, we're going to hold there. Okay, so you're still facing forward. We're gonna use the heel and the toes and walk that foot toward the wall behind you, right? Make sure your um, 
ankle is right below your knee, so you don't want to have your foot walked way out here or out here or in here. You want to have that foot underneath the knee and then pull your knee toward the wall at the back of the room. So you're still facing forward with your torso. You're pulling that knee back and then relax it a little bit. Let's try that again. Pull the knee toward the back wall and relax. And one more time, we're going to pull the knee toward the back wall and breathe. Take your left hand, place it on the outside of your right thigh, and then you can take your right hand to the chair if you want, and we're going to just twist to the right. And as you're twisting to the right, keep pulling your left knee toward the wall behind you. Keep breathing in and breathing out. Nice, steady, deep breaths. And then unwind your torso, coming back. Relax that leg a little bit. Let's extend the leg. Have the heel on the floor, toes reaching up toward your shin. You're still facing forward with your body, keeping the right shoulder back. So you don't want to let that right shoulder roll forward. We're going to lean over into that left side and then come back up. So toes are lifted toward the shin. That gets a good stretch through the back of that leg. And as we lean to the side, we're getting a stretch through the right side of the body, right? A couple more of these, just going sideways, good. One more, excellent. Coming back up, now point your toes. So see if you can get your toes kind of on the floor, or close to it. Left, um, right hand, sorry, on the chair. And now we're gonna lean to the right, see if you can take your left arm up past your ear and then come back to sort of that neutral position. So the longer you can make your left leg and the more you can anchor it to the floor, the more you're going to feel this stretch through the side of the body as you come up and over. So how about two more times? Just breathing in and breathing out. Doesn't matter when you inhale, when you exhale, as long as your breath is round and smooth. Let's just do one more time for good luck. Good. Excellent. Okay. Relax that leg, heel and toes. Let's come back to center. Okay. Coming back to center. Let your hands rest on your thighs. All four corners of your foot are on the floor. Close your eyes a little bit. Notice your legs. Notice your arms. So we've done some work from the fingertips to the shoulders, from the toes to the hips. And now we're going to do a little work for the spine. So opening your eyes, bring your feet a little wider than your hips. So I think last week we worked with the six movements of the spine. It had been a while, but we'll do that again. So your spine um, uh, is like any other joint in your body. If you don't use it, if you don't go through the range of movement that's available in your joints, you lose that range of movement because your body, your body's so efficient. Your body doesn't want to waste energy um, trying to maintain your flexibility if it's a movement you never make. So it just kind of shuts that down and says, okay, we'll just kind of do these pieces over here and then there's more energy for other things. So with your spine, we often, um, um, we often overuse certain parts of the spine because it's easier. So your neck is one area and your low back is the other area. And isn't it interesting that those are the two parts of the spine that we tend to injure the most? And we tend to have the most pain or discomfort, right? Oh, my low back or, oh, my neck. How often do you say, oh, my rib cage, right between like uh, thoracic five and six? Yeah, not so much, yeah, because that's really protected in there. So we overuse, right? So um, one of the things that we can do is start to cultivate more of a sense of movement, even if it's a small movement in your in your y the uh, central part of your spine where your ribs are is called your thoracic spine, right? So in your thoracic spine, if you can start to create a little more awareness of movement, even if it's just subtle, um, you'll tend to think of your spine uh, more holistically. So it won't be like, oh, I have to use my neck all the time or I have to use my low back all the time. So by doing so, we're going to bend forward and backward, right? So think about your spine bending forward and backward. And we're going to visualize um, a shrimp. You know what a shrimp looks like? You know how it's all kind of curled that way? So we're going to visualize the spine like a little shrimp. So take your chin, bring it down to your chest. 
So like you could tuck your chin between your collarbones. Now what you're feeling in the back of your neck, I want you to tune into what you're feeling in the back of your neck. This is the part of your spine, I was saying your neck, your cervical spine, this is the part of your spine that tends to get overused. So you might be feeling a bit of a stretch back there and that's a good thing. And then see if you can get your chin down a little bit more and actually imagine bringing your forehead down toward your navel. So get the rounding down a little bit farther in your back. So now it's not just your neck, but it's sort of the shoulders in the shoulder blades. And then see if you can round forward even a little bit more, like you could bring your forehead down to the floor, say. So you feel that go down below your shoulder blades into your ribs a little bit. Pull your belly in as you're doing this. See if you can round a little bit more so you feel it in the lower part of your back. And now push into your hands and really slowly come back up. So once you're back up, just notice what you feel in the back of your body. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay. And now we're going to come into extension. So that's the other direction that your spine can go in. So from here, we're going to start with the hips. So everybody take your hands and find your hip bones. So way up here. So let's see, a good way to find your hip bones. Find your belly button. Okay. So you got your belly button. Go out to the sides. So on about the same plane for most of us, John, yours might be a little higher because guys have a little bit higher hip bones. And then you want to push in. So can you feel like the bony part underneath there? And then if you go to the very top of it, it gets into the soft part of your waist. You want to go right to the very top of the bony part. So have your hands right there on the top of the bony part. And then imagine you're tilting the bony part forward and then backward. You all got that? So it's forward and backward. Some of you might already know this. This is a pelvic tilt. So we're just taking the whole pelvis and we're tilting it forward and backward. Got that? Can you feel the top of your hip bones kind of moving? Great. So that's where the movement is going to start. So I'm going to have you tip your uh, hip bones forward. So that means you're, you're in this position, right? So you're arching your back a little bit. Everybody there? Yeah. Now, as you're doing this tip forward with your hip bones, squeeze your shoulder blades together, right? So you're arching, your back is kind of arching like this. And then tuck your chin in and lift it back a little bit. In other words, don't lift your head like this. You want to tuck the chin in and then lift back a little bit. And then come back the other way, kind of to a neutral position. So we got that. So we're going to go forward and backward a few times. So we're tilting the hip bones forward and we're squeezing the shoulder blades and then coming up with the chin a little bit and then back to neutral. Good. Couple more of these. So we're really working that spine a little bit. Good. Couple more. Last one. Let's really squeeze and come into extension here, you guys. And then release. Good. Let's roll the shoulders up and back a little bit. Okay. So we've got that forward and backward movement of the spine. Now what I'll say is forward movement of the spine. That's it. Right? You all recognize this, don't you? Yeah, because we all do this. We all do this. So this is sort of, it's so interesting to me too because this is the position. Right? We start in this position. Right? I, we we, we kind of end up going back into that position. So it takes a lot to fight. That's sort of a natural position for us to be in, you know? Um, it, it takes a lot for us to fight that. Coming into extension twice as much as we come into flexion is an important way to keep your spine supple. So think about how many hours a day you might spend in this position. And then see if you can counter that by coming into this position. So even doing things like, I don't know, like standing at the kitchen sink, right? We tend to 
get into like this kind of crouched over position. <laughs> See if you can stand at the kitchen sink with a, a little bit more um, um, extension in your spine. Different things that you're doing. Brushing your teeth. That's my favorite. If, uh, if we did everything we needed to do yoga-wise while we were brushing our teeth, we'd probably spend 20 minutes a day brushing our teeth. But standing there brushing your teeth, kind of go into this a more extended position rather than into this kind of forward flexing position. So um, flexion and extension sideways, right? So your spine is three-dimensional, so it goes side to side. So we're just going to lean to the right a little bit first with the neck, right? So bring your ear to your shoulder and then bring your shoulder down toward your hip. Don't let your left sitting bone come up off the chair. You can have your hand resting here on your thigh for a little bit of support. And then we're going to come all the way back up and go to the other side. So left ear to left shoulder, shoulder comes down to the hip, and then coming back up. So let's pause for a moment here. So I want you to notice this. What a lot of us will do, remember I said there are certain parts of the spine that we overuse and then other parts we don't. So what a lot of us will do is say, oh, yep, I got the ear to the shoulder thing. And then when I say shoulder to the hip, we do this, right? Because we don't want to move this middle part of the spine. So instead of moving the middle part of the spine, I've got the upper part of the spine moving and the lower part of the spine moving, and I've completely forgotten the middle part. Instead, if I bring my ear to my shoulder, now, instead, when I'm bringing my shoulder to my hip, instead of leaning in that direction, I'm really going to bring the shoulder to the hip. Let's try that again. All right, so ear to shoulder, and now think just shoulder to hip without leaning over. Got that? That looks much better. Good. Let's try that on the other side. So same thing, ear to shoulder, because that just gives you the direction, and now shoulder to hip. And it's a much smaller movement, isn't it? Yeah, but you can feel that in your, in that part of your spine, your thoracic spine, which is where your rib cage is. Let's do that one more time on that side. Great. So when you're doing this, I know we talk about doing this in the morning or at night when you're si sitting on your bed, maybe doing this kind of a stretch. Think about this middle part of your spine, from your collarbones to about, well, yeah, to exactly where your rib cage ends. So from your collarbones to where your rib cage ends. That's your thoracic spine. Doesn't get a lot of movement. And why it, that's important, well, there's many reasons, but one of the reasons, and kind of ties into what we've been talking about this morning, is breathing. Because if you're tight through your thoracic spine, you're tight through the rib cage, and you have little muscles between your ribs that help you breathe. So if those little muscles are tight, you're not going to be able to get a full deep breath. Your, your rib cage isn't going to be able to expand the way it needs to expand in order to accommodate that additional breath. So this is a breathing practice, this kind of coming in from side to side. So I want to finish with our last of the six movements of the spine, which is rotation, right? So twisting. Um, and doing this at the end of your forward bending and your side bending is good because now you've got the spine kind of warmed up a little bit. Press into your sitting bones and lengthen through your spine. It's important to twist from a long spine, not from a short spine, okay? So starting with your head turned to the right, then your shoulders, your upper back, your mid back, your low back. See if you can twist as far around as you can go, breathing in, breathing out, and then slowly come back to center. Let's go in the other direction, so turning the head, the shoulders, the upper back, mid back, and low back. Breathing in, breathing out, coming back around. Good. Let's do that one more time on each side, so just starting with the head, the shoulders, the slower you go. So think about that thoracic spine, the spine that's attached to your rib cage, coming back to center. That's the part of the spine we're really trying to access here. So, because I know you can twist really well from your neck and your low back, but do you know that you can twist pretty well from your mid back as well? And coming back. Beautiful. Close your eyes. Take a breath in, let it out with a sigh. Ah. And then tune into your breathing. If you can, breathe in and out through your nose. As you breathe in and out, 
imagine that you're sitting inside your rib cage. It's like you're taking this tour inside your own body. You're sitting inside your rib cage. And imagine you can see in three dimensions with every inhalation, your rib cage expands. And with every exhalation, your rib cage contracts. Long, slow, deep breaths. Every breath in is an expansion in the rib cage. Every breath out is a gentle contraction in the rib cage. As you breathe in and out, relax your jaw, your neck, your shoulders. Relax your hands, your feet. Relax your arms and legs. Let go of any tension that you're still holding in your body this morning. Breathing in and breathing out as the air moves in through your nostrils. See if you can visualize all those beautiful millions and millions of cilia filtering the air. Breathing in, breathing out. With every inhalation, your chest rises. With every exhalation, your chest falls. Take your hands up to the center of your chest and take a couple of breaths here, right into that space underneath your hands. If you haven't been able to feel the rise and fall of your chest, see if you can feel it now. One more breath in and we'll let it out with a sigh. <sighs> and then if you'd like, take your hands together and just take a moment in gratitude to yourself for all the gifts you've been given, all the things you've worked hard for in your life. And then if you'd like, maybe opening your eyes and just sort of Saying hello or recognizing all these wonderful people here. Mm. Great. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Stay cool this weekend, you guys. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>